born to a Brahmin family in the Trimalaya village of South India. My father was a philosopher, and I grew up educated in the traditional sciences and Hindu thought. After reading the Buddhist sastras, I became a Buddhist layman and traveled to North India, where I received my ordination by Dharmapala. Soon after, I began my Buddhist studies at Nalanda. My name is Dharmakirti. I am most commemorated for my commentary on the great Dignagas, Pramana Samuchaya. I entitled this commentary, Pramana Vartika. Reality, which appears to have continuity, is in fact a series of infinite events, in which an event of a particular type lasts a short period of time, and is then replaced in the next instant by a similar event. One may then ask, how do we come to know the reality of the external world if it is made up of momentary events coordinated according to discernible causal laws? Reality is known through pramana. My commentary is divided into four sections, of which I will focus on two. Pramana as what my later commentator, Tsungkapa, refers to as valid cognition. The other aspect of pramana I will focus on is the means to actual valid cognition. These means include only perception and inference. The word pramana means to measure or ascertain. The study of pramana is important because it is the way in which consciousness comes to know and understand reality. A true ascertainment of reality by consciousness is a bare cognition of the object. In other words, the object known by consciousness is free from any conceptual construction. These bare objects that are apprehended by the faculties of perception directly reflect reality. The moment consciousness apprehends an object through direct sensory perception, which directly reflects reality, it is immediately followed by an instant of direct mental perception and then by a sense perception that is no longer directly in contact with reality. Thus, our conceptual constructions of objects dilute the true reality of external objects. How, then, do we arrive at a true reflection of reality? True knowledge of the external world is gained through the cognitive pramanas of perception and inference. There are four types of direct perception that apprehend reality as it is. These perceptions include sensory, mental, apperceptive, and yogic perceptions. A sense perception directly cognizes a sensory object through the medium of a sense faculty. A mental perception is a brief, non-conceptual, non-sensory perception. Mental perceptions also include extrasensory perception. Finally, Yogic perceptions are direct realizations of a perceived salvific truth, such as the Four Noble Truths. Reality is also known by a process of reasoning, through the pramana of inference. Inference is a valid reflection of the external world because it is based upon an initial real existent object, a particular. This particular object, apprehended by the pramana of inference, is then related to its larger, more generic self. For example, if one sees the particular object of smoke, then it is generally accepted that there is fire producing the smoke, even if one does not see the flames of the fire. Correct cognition through perception and inference must reveal real existent objects. For pramana to be valid, the object of pramana must satisfy two conditions. It must be non-deceptive and have a causal efficiency. In other words, the object must perform a function that in turn produces an effect that is in accordance with the nature of the object. For example, a chair is a real existent object because its function is to provide support. Thus, the function of support is consistent with the nature of the chair. The chair is real because it is non-deceptive and is defined in terms of the functional nature of the chair. 
truth of the external world stems from direct contact with a real object and perception, or from an indirect relationship between reality and consciousness. This is how consciousness knows reality, through perception and inference. Objects do not appear directly to consciousness, but through representations that are apprehended directly by perception and indirectly through inference. The distinction between direct and indirect ways to truly ascertain reality led me to question language as true pramana. The object of direct perception is a unique particular that constitutes reality, whereas all indirect knowledge signifies a universal. Direct perception apprehends real entities, while universals are mental constructs apprehended by the faculties of indirect perception. Although perception appears to provide consciousness, with an undistorted access to reality, perception alone is ultimately mistaken because it is dependent upon conception. In other words, subject and object cannot be separated. Conception categorizes the objects perceived and synthesizes them. Conceptual activity relates to universals which it in turn mistakenly projects onto reality. Universal objects of inference are real in so much as they are real agreed upon mental fictions or real mental constructions. Universals are the objects of language. Therefore, knowledge gained through the perception of universal objects is not a direct reflection of reality. Nonetheless, language is meaningful because it is grounded on the knowledge resulting from direct perception. Language then is the intermediary tool used to capture a particular aspect of an object. The aspect of the object that language captures is excluded from a larger class of objects it can't be applied to. Language describes objects negatively through the exclusion of particular aspects of the object. For example, the color blue may be defined by dividing all colors into blue and non-blue. The definition of blue, then, is that it is not non-blue, and vice versa. The definition of non-blue is that it is not blue. As the great Dignaga puts it, a word can express its own meaning only by negating the opposite meaning. Thus, the object of language, words, signify an exclusion of all other things, the negation of everything else. This is what I call apoha. Through this process of apoha, knowledge of the external world can be established in conceptuality in the absence of real universals.